And hello! Welcome to Evening Musings. It's your host, Aaron, and we're waiting for our other host, Lazarus, as we are going to talk about election. Again, this time, we are rebuttaling David D. Gates. Yes, that's right. David D. Gates, one of the leaders of the Full Preterist Movement. Hold on one second. Lance. Let me say approve. There we go. All right, so we're adding Lance. So anyway, we're about David D. Gates, his video on election. Lance and I have reviewed it, and this is our response. Uh, welcome to this episode of Evening Music. And there's our other host, Lazarus Connolly. Welcome to Evening Musings. Evening Musings. I should have I should have got a book or something and started reading it and then looked up. Would have been more of a take, gotta take the the drink and the co or the drink of coffee or Dr Pepper in this case. Yeah, Lance says Dr Pepper. <laughs> so anyway, this episode is is refuting the video that David D Gates did on election. Yeah, and uh, Lance, why don't you explain why why we're doing this? Well, I decided that uh, I wanted to do this because David D. Gates has been talking to me, and so I said, you know, I he he asked me to refute it, so I said, you know, I'll refute it. I'll talk to Aaron, and we'll we'll see if we want to make a video on this. You know, so I decided, yeah, I'll I'll respond to it. He made a twenty two minute video um, where he he put up some scriptures and. Uh, tried to tried to go with uh, his his take on election, I guess, and you know. Uh, so we're gonna try it. We're gonna see what the scripture says, and we'll look at the election, and we'll look at the Hebrew and Greek words that election means, and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So I don't know if you want. I, I want to start with a couple points, and maybe you know, is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. So in the beginning of the video, David D. Gates addresses tradition. He says that there's long-standing tradition that Jesus is going to come back. Mm -hmm. I just want to explain what tradition means. The, the Apostle Paul urged Timothy to keep the faith that was handed to him. Titus, same thing. Mm -hmm. There is a faith that has been passed down from generation to generation, from Jesus to the Apostles, to the church fathers, and so on and so forth. And although there are little things that everyone has their own opinions on, the main faith has always been agreed upon. Yep. The faith that Christ has come in the flesh, Christ is risen and seated at the right hand of the Father, and Christ will come again and resurrect the living and the dead. We find this in the creeds, signed by church fathers. Yep. Um. So David D. Gates will say, well, these guys are just about tradition and religion. Let me tell you something. The Apostle John discipled Polycarp. Did he forget to tell him that the second coming had occurred? Or how about no. Clement and Hermes, who were alive before AD 70? No. Clement, mentioned right in the Bible. He, didn't, he wasn't a full preterist. Yeah. Hermes, Hermes and Clement are both mentioned by Paul directly. And most, most even secular scholars agree that Clement is the writer of first Clement and that Clement is the, is the person that Paul's referring to because Clement dies in the reign of Domitian. So uh, he's martyred by Emperor Domitian. Like, uh, well, he's martyred by the Emperor Domitian's, uh, some of his people or whatever, traditionally speaking, but that's not, that's not, I mean, it's not really, it's, there's nothing really to refute about that. Like it's, it's a historical fact. And so yeah. this is, this is literally, this is literally, I mean, you, you, maybe they could argue that Clement is an apostate, but at the end of the day, he's probably not because he matches everything that Paul says. And if you read, if you an read, apostate, first, he's mentioned in the Bible as somebody who's a righteous man. Yeah. And, and if, and if you actually read first Clement, like uh, Joel Sexton was pointing this out to me, Joel, Joel Sexton read it for the first time or whatever. And well, I, I take that back. He might've read it before that, but uh he was reading it again with some fresh eyes, you know, and he was like, Lance Conley, you know what? He sounds a lot like Paul. And I was like, that's because he's Paul, one of Paul's disciples. And Joel's like, you know, oh, well, you know, 
it was, you know, obvious, you know, we sometimes we all have, you know, aha moments. We're like, dang, you know, you're right, <laughs> you know. Right. But uh, yeah, it was fun. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, so I, I noticed that too. He sounds like Paul because he's a disciple of Paul. But, right. Uh, so when we talk about tradition, see, because here's the thing, we have a revelation of Christ and what He's going to do. Mm -hmm. If if that revelation has been missed for 1970 years. Don't you think the gates of hell have then prevailed against the church? I would say so, because... And we, don't believe, and we don't believe that to be the case. We believe that the faith that has been handed down from one generation to another is the same faith that continues, and the gates of hell have not prevailed against the church. And I would say, too, um, I don't think that the full preterist would want to argue that God has failed, because I think that... I think that I Why think would that, Jesus go and tell us to make disciples if the message was just going to get lost? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean it's it, dumb. It doesn't work if if you're if you're consistent with prayers, it's just not going to work. But uh, right, and, and I also want to bring up. He mentioned time statements. Mm -hmm. That these are the clear time statements. Mm -hmm. I challenge David D. Gates to find me one time statement that says the resurrection is going to happen soon. One. All right. Give me one. You can't find one. It doesn't say it in Matthew 24. I don't see the word resurrection. Mm -hmm. I mean, it talks about the gathering of the elect. But again, you know, I mean, even in 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15, I mean, even when Paul says we, Paul died before AD 70. Yeah. He's talking that he's whoever's talk alive. Yeah, he's talking in general to the church. And, and he's, he's also, he's, he is focusing on the Thessalonian church when he says that. But he's also broadly speaking about the entire church as a whole. So it's not just, it's not just the people in Thessalonia. It's the people in Philippi and uh, it's the people in, you know, in Corinth. It's, it's everywhere. Hi, Julian. Um, yeah, so so he's he's talking to everybody, you know. He's he's not just talking. He is he is talking specifically to the Thessalonians there, but he's he's also talking generally speaking to the entire church because the the entire church is going to be uh the entire church is going to be seeing Christ. That's that's the whole point of the whole second coming is that the brightness of his coming will be so bright that the that the sun will be darkened because he he's the uncreated light. That's what they call it. Right. The uncreated light, and so uh, he's going to be so bright that the moon will not give off as much light as it usually does, and the sun will be darkened because uh, Christ is so much brighter than the sun. It's not actually saying that the sun will like go go dark. It's saying that Christ's coming will be so bright and so visible and so full of uncreated light that the the visible created light is going to look like nothing in comparison to it. Right. So let's able. let's get into the election argument. All I just right. wanted to address those few points. Let's get into the election argument. So Lance, what do you got? All right. So obviously, we believe Christ is going to return physically in the second coming. You know, uh, and I don't I don't remember if Gates denies that or not. Which he can he can uh, he can say whether or not he believes that or not. So, anyways, uh, yeah, he argues that we need to go into time statements. So first, before we do that, I'm going to say let's assume that let's let's just assume that full preterism is correct, and so we have to take into account Matthew 24 31, obviously. Uh, so, um, if Christ returns in 70 A.D., Matthew 24 31 also has to be fulfilled, and we know that eclectos has always been used the same way that it's always been used that the people in ancient Greece are going to say it the same way that you would say it in modern day. So uh, we've got, we've got, that's how the election works. It's temporal. Once you choose something, once you select something, the word means choose, select, elect, uh, vote. Vote is at cloge, but it still means the same thing. Um, but elect house is what's actually in uh, Matthew 24, 31, which is choosing. Um, so, you know, once you choose something, if I choose this Dr. Pepper can, you know, I've chosen it. I, 
I can't un I mean I could unchoose I guess but you know right God God's always going to choose something and then when his ch when his choice is uh, chose he's chosen it and chosen right his path, it does it and ends. Right. We look at we look at the book of life. A book has a beginning mm -hmm. and a book has an end. Yes. He knows the beginning. He knows the end. Yep. There's finality in scripture. Mm -hmm. When the election is over, that's it. Yeah. Now, uh, Gates had argued that uh, he had argued that it that what did he argue? He argued that it sometimes the election means different things. And he actually, and I'm I'm paraphrasing him here, but he said that it doesn't always mean the same thing. And, you know, I never actually said that. I never actually said that election means just one thing specifically and one thing only. I actually have said that it does always, it always means the same thing as far as the action and process of selection, like the action and process of selecting, choosing and voting. That's, that's what I've actually said. Because, uh, you know, and, we're, and we'll look into these scriptures that Gates pointed out and, uh, you know, we'll talk about that. But, uh, yeah, the election, the election is the election is not just a people. You, you could in the in the uh, Old Testament, the words Bakar and Bakir, and you can use that to mean uh, an object you choose. Like if I choose a Dr. Pepper, that's Bakar. And there's different ways to say Bakar, but that's the that's the uh, that's the term or whatever. Uh, so yeah, so like but that's in, the, it's still temporal. In every scripture he used, there was a fixed number of whatever he said. Jesus is the elect. Yes, there's only one of Jesus. Yes. There's not an infinite amount of Jesuses. There's one Jesus. There's one yeah. Jesus Christ. Jesus Anytime not, the word eclectos it's you is used, there's a fixed number of people. Yeah, it's not continual. Yeah, well, with 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 that with that verse, uh, Gates uses Luke twenty three thirty five, and he you know he goes with uh, I'm going I got it here. I'm just gonna read it. So you've got you've got Luke twenty three thirty five where he oh, hold on I got the wrong deal here. 23, 35. Okay, so the word for eclectos there, I'll say that first. It's, it is eclectos, so it means chosen one. Well, and I'm going to read it in a second. I just got to get this to come up, but um, here we go. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. You know? So, uh, yeah, and there uh, you have, because an adjective can also be a noun. You know that. Sometimes an adjective is a noun. But uh, in Luke 20, 35, it says, If he be Christ, the chosen of God. And so uh, Christ is a noun, and chosen is an adjective, and... Uh, of God, chosen of God. So the chosen is possessed by God. It's a possession, like like I possess this Dr. Pepper. Um, so yeah, Christ is the chosen one of God because he is God and he chose himself to come and save man in the incarnation. Right. So that is, that's the elect for that. Uh, and so now we get Isaiah 42, number 42, one. He says, my chosen one, the servant in context is the elect one. And we know that to be Christ because he's the chosen one. So he's the elect. He's the elect servant, the elect. Uh, yeah. And so First uh, Peter 2, 6, David quotes that. And uh, it says, I'll read it here. It says, First Peter 1, 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Um, yeah, that David was right when he said that the elect is about the uh, the, uh, the exiles, right? But uh, yeah, the exiles are part of the elect because yeah, he might. Be, I think he is talking about Jewish Jewish believers, right? He's talking about Jewish Christians. Well, who do we know in Romans 11, 25, 27, who those are? It's the Jew and Gentile. They're Israel. And Israel is the 
So that's the elect. The, the elect so, is the. So David's asking a question. I just want to answer it really quick. If um, there is a fixed number of elect, how then can the seed be as many as the stars of the sky, innumerable? Yeah, David, there, there's one problem with that. The problem yeah, the is problem. He, he names the stars. And as many as stars are, you can still – there's still a number of stars. It's not infinite. There's a number. It's a really big number, but there's a number. And plus, God is on, omniscient. So Lance, anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, uh, he knows all. Like, God is omniscient. So he knows right. all he knows. Of he has elect. So the number is right. fixed, not you're a full preterist or not. I mean, whether, whether, you're, whether you're a full preterist and you believe that it's – happened already like the elect is still a fixed number and actually like if you if you take into account uh romans 11 25 27 you have the same word pleroma that is used like in mark 8 when he says that the basket is filled to the brim so right. you have in account that when election is in when when you're taking election into account and you're taking the fullness of the gentiles the basket is filled for the gentiles so in other words and and that that also goes with the the amount of jews that will be saved after that so because right. their partial hardening will be gone so you have to take that into account and so uh yeah the if 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 all of israel is saved then that means all the jews and gentiles in christ have been saved in 70 a.d if full preterism is correct but there's a problem because the elect number is fixed because right knows who is his elect and so and john, and john 6 says all the oh, father has given to me yes i will raise up on the last day yeah all so, the father has given to me so if the last day is ad 70 you don't belong to the father because they were raised up that's it we're done yeah that's un i mean it's, it's an unfortunate thing for full predators i'm like but but yeah you're like you would not be able to post 70 AD say that there is someone part of the elect because the elect have been elected in 70 AD because they were right now, I, now. Right. Now I believe because the Bible says in Isaiah two verse two, that in the last days, the nations will come to Mount Zion, the Gentiles. I believe right now is where we are. The Gentiles are being saved. Jew <laughs> and Gentile are being saved all throughout the world. Right. Yep. And I believe there will be a last day where we're all raised bodily. Now, it's funny because um, Julian – and David mentioned this video, but Julian asked a question about the end. And mm -hmm. I just want to address this point because I can't I – can't, I'm starting to really get annoyed by this. Where do you – show me one verse where it says the end uh, – sorry, I'm looking at Julian's question, but Aaron was the last day – was the last day not the eternal day, not a day? Okay, let me just explain this for a minute. There's no such thing as an end of a Jewish age. Can somebody, like, show me a scripture where it says this is the, the end of the Jewish age? No, th there's nothing written about that. I know this present evil age, that's what the Bible says. Now, what does the age to come look like? The age to come, according to Matthew 13, 40, all wickedness is taken from the field, which is the earth. All wicked people were taken from the earth, mm -hmm. and this is where righteousness dwells, right? Yeah. In, in Romans 7, we have a body of death in which we struggle with sin. Romans 8, we're free from that corruption. And that's God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Yeah, and I think I think what I think what the predators get, I think what the predators screw up on with this is that they they've a lot of them have seen dispensationalism and so when when they were dispensationalists they believed that the that the hev that that the earth is going to be destroyed right well it's not going to be destroyed thank god cuz god loves creation and he wants to redeem all of creation and transform it to the image of god that he you know that he place right julian yeah. Paul, Paul, cuz you mentioned daniel 12 my problem, no matter what your interpretation of Daniel is, the problem is in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul is not quoting Daniel 12. Yeah. He, he doesn't. He doesn't. He quotes Hosea and one other minor prophet. He does not quote Daniel. And plus he says Danatos will end. And so Danatos is physical and spiritual death. So in other words, you have to have 
you have to have physical death is gone because right. if Christ if Christ's body is physical and it is physical, uh, you you can't like if it's physical and glorified, so will ours. That's what Paul exactly. Is. And, and so, we showed in another video how it is physical and glorified. Yeah, we we did that in the first video, or but well, yeah, it was the first video we did that we proved that God does have a physical body, that He did die on the cross and He did rise and He did ascend and He kept His body. Like we, I think we did a pretty good job with showing that for two young bucks, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm gonna keep going a little bit here. Yeah. Keep going with the uh, collectos. Yeah, so, and I, I was going to explain this with, with 1 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. Uh, well, I, I, that, did I do 1 Peter 2.6? Yeah. Okay, so I lay, I lay in Sion a chosen cornerstone. Yeah, so uh, in 1 Peter 2.6, in context, he's saying, I lay in Sion a chosen cornerstone. So Zion is his chosen cornerstone. You know, so right. that that's the term for new. That's the term for the new, uh, the new Israel. Um, right now, in First Peter one one, he calls the Judaic Christians a collect toys, and that that means Jewish and Gentile Christians elect, and uh, they're the elect. And he cl uh, David claims that election doesn't have one singular definition, and that's false. Uh, eclectos always means chosen to choose or to vote or elect, and it's always either in an adjective or a verb. Right. And so I, I also am going to say this too. It's often used as an adjective to, to describe the noun in the New Testament, and you can also you can also make an adjective a noun. And sometimes that that's what we have to do when we translate Greek to English. Like when we say right. the meek, when we say like the meek will inherit the earth. Well, meek is an adjective, but it's also a noun because the we're describing we're describing who's going to inherit the earth. And so meek is both an adjective and a noun in this case. And that works the same way with the collector. By it's the way, they inherit the earth. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. physically. Yeah, physically. The meek will inherit the earth. The because they're the they're the chosen of God. Um so, you know, Psalms 105.6 and Psalms 106.23, uh, God uses the same thing here. Uh, he uses Bakir, and let me look here. Bakir, got to look here a little bit. Bakir is, I think Bakir is a verb. So there's not a, it's not an adjective or anything there, really. But uh, 105, Psalms 105.6 Bakir, Bakir says his chosen ones, and so, you know, that's his chosen ones. They're part of the elect, because the Old Covenant is part of the elect, too, just so you know. Um, the Jews and Gentiles are part of the elect. Even the Old Testament faithful are the elect. New Testament faithful, Old Testament faithful, they're both the elect. And uh, Hebrews 11 says that they're all saved by faith, you know, that's the elect. They're saved by faith. Um Psalms 106.23, though, it's Moses is his chosen one, and it says Bakir. It's the same thing. God chose him. God chose Moses to be the chosen one for the Mosaic Covenant. So, uh, you know, he's the chosen one there. Um, and I really didn't know what David was going with about Psalms 105.6, to be honest, because he was saying something about the seed of Abraham. And then he said the seed of Christ was chosen in 70 because he said something about Galatians 3.27. And I, I really didn't understand what he was trying to get across there. But what I got out of it, I, I just thought, you know, Paul clearly talks about the seed of Abraham. Yeah. So uh, in Romans, he shows that we're all by faith in Christ, children of Abraham by faith, whether or by being Jew or Gentile, natural born or spirit born. Uh, and so that's the elect. So yes, old covenant Israel had an elect, and new covenant uh, Israel does too. So uh, yeah, and I don't, I didn't know what he was talking about with chapter forty nine, because I didn't, I don't think I found a deal about, uh, I don't think I found the word bakir in there. <laughs> like yeah, I, you know, David, no matter what, no matter because David's asking another question, no matter what way you cut it, the Salvation has a number, 
again, the book of life is the beginning and the end. When we gather the elect from the four winds, Julian, you mentioned the four corners of the earth. That's a fixed number of people. It's on this planet Earth. As far as we know, there's not any elect on the moon or Jupiter or anything. So it's, it's all not on. infinite. There's yeah. nowhere in the Bible that says this is infinite. Not one place. Um, and what else? Uh, Matthew 20. Yeah, we already know Matthew 24, 31 says. And if the full press is going to interpret it very super literal, you know, you've got to interpret it that way too. But um, yeah, so uh, let's see. What else do I got here? He put, he mentioned Revelation 22. And I just want to point out that there's actually, it's actually a benediction. Like it, it ends the vision and then it starts, it's, it's, it's telling you. It starts over again. Yeah, it starts, it's a, it's, John's John's doing a recapitulation there of Revelation one, where he starts it off and he's ending it because it's a letter, like it is a letter. When so, you write an essay, what's your conclusion look like? Yeah, you, you repeat you repeat what the usually you repeat what you're going to say in the beginning to conclude your remarks. If, if it's a good if it's a good uh, if it's a good essay or a good letter, um, but yeah, like Revelation twenty two, it, it's a benediction, <laughs> like. He he has the vision, and then uh, let's see here. Where does it end? It ends on. Yeah, it in, it ends basically on uh, Revelation. Uh, it basically ends on Revelation uh, seventeen or whatever, because it's like it in. No, that's not right. Let me look here. I got to Julian, it. I can't answer all your questions on this video, but if you want to inbox me after, we can definitely talk. Yeah, but essentially, essentially, he he ends it at this point, and so you you have a benediction going on there because he he's right. recapitulating uh, he's recapitulating Revelation one, like I mean that's what he's doing there. Right. So let's see here. What else do we got? Uh, I think that's actually it. All right. Oh, hold on. The marriage, I think. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I've been talking to Gates about about marriage or whatever. Like in in the in the uh, in the whole thing. The elect are the married people. Like God, God's marrying Israel, right? So you've got you've got this marriage going on, and uh, he's consummated the marriage if eighty seventy is ended. So you're not part of the wedding. You're not part. You're you would actually be the unwed. Like if you if you're if you're trying to get married to Christ, you can't get married because he's already been married to Israel, the elect. So right. that doesn't work either. Right. Uh, let's see what let's see what they've got on here. I'm gonna look at what they've written all on here. Well, David Gates asked in a question about Christ being priest forever. Okay. What about that? Like, Christ, if Christ is priest forever, he's always a man because the old covenant had to have a man all the time. Right. Um, the reason that the reason that the Christ says the law appoints men to be high priests. Yeah. And and obviously Christ is a man, and Christ he's the perfect is, man. Yeah, he's the perfect man. He's eternal man because he lives forever. Because he's the resurrection. Uh, so I don't. Yeah, I don't know. What I think do? he's he's saying that if Christ needs to mediate forever, why doesn't salvation go on forever? Well, because the elect would be elected in 70 AD. Well, let me help you out, David. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had to partake of the tree of life, right? Mm -hmm. Right. To maintain their livelihood. They fed off their relationship with God, right? Mm -hmm. So they fed, they fed off the light of God. This time it's going to be even better where we won't be able to sin and we'll feed off the light of Jesus forever. We'll be just as he is. But we'll feed off of that. Yep. At least that's my view.
And that's that's my view too. We all we all drink of the river of life, so we you know, we all drink of the river of life, so we But uh, again, this is just like it's grasping at straws because I mean in all honesty, I mean how many times do we see that there's a final end to this whole thing? You know? I mean it's just constant transcription. I mean the problem is and and I hate to be like those IO people, but the IO have a saying, you know, they say that, uh, well, why are you trying to put yourself into the Bible? And the full preterist is kind of inconsistent and they're kind of guilty of putting themselves in the Bible. They're trying to still keep their salvation as part of it. But it says in Hebrews nine, uh, that, that salvation will come when Christ returns. So if the second happened, salvation came for Israel, the elect, and it didn't come for the people that are outside. It came right. and, inside Israel. Right, inside and speaking Israel. of a for, and speaking of a forever kingdom, they keep bringing up the kingdom is inaugurated spiritually, and it's in its fullness when it overtakes the cosmos in our bodies. You know, yeah. it's like the mustard. It's like the mustard seed. Mm-hmm. It starts off small, but it yeah. grows and it grows until it overtakes everything. You know, Romans 8, it says the creation waits for us to be redeemed, the revealing of the sons of God. Because when we're redeemed, that's the moment all creation is redeemed. Yeah, Adam, And the earth is full of his glory. It says the earth is full of his glory. Yeah, Adam, is, Adam means soil man. Like it literally means man of soil. And so the man of soil is going to be redeemed because he's creation. So he's being redeemed by the man of heaven, which is Christ. And so... If, if Christ is redeemed, then the, the man of soil will also be redeemed. And if the soil is redeemed, then all of creation is redeemed because Adam is tied with the creation. All right. Yeah, so uh, let's, I'm going to read what else. Uh, what has he got here? By the way, I think you misrepresented what I said in the video. And as a favor result, you haven't answered my question. Do me a favor so we can grow. Delete this video, go quote me, and answer my questions. Then redo this because saying I said something about this or that doesn't answer my question. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but, uh, like, if you think I misrepresented you, you can tell us why in this video, and we'll keep it going. And I, I'm trying not to misrepresent you. I mean, I'm trying to say what you've said and i'm trying to take it what i think you're saying so if i misrepresent it, just let me let me know and i'm i'm open to dialogue I mean, man. Watched not, your video and took notes that's what we yeah, did I, I took notes when i was doing this video so i stopped it and redid it if i didn't really think i got it so um i mean if if i mean i'm open to dialogue david like if you know, I'm not, I'm not against you or anything. I just, I think you're wrong, but you know, I, I'm not against you. If there is no, if there be no sinful man on earth forever, then Christ is no priest forever because priests stand before God on behalf of sinful man. That's not true at all. If, if we're, if we're losing, there, there's no, that's not, that's not right at all. The, the high priest the high priest will not have to do sacrifices anymore because he's already given the ultimate sacrifice. So I don't know what you're talking about there. Like Paul says that the sin will be, or the whole scripture attests that scripture will, uh, it, it attests that sin will be no more. Death will be no more because Christ is the eternal high priest. And through him, we have no sins. And through him, there will be no more death. So I don't really know what you're saying there. Like, that's why he's the high priest forever. But, yeah, priest forever in eternal sense, now forever, king over an eternal kingdom. I I, I kind of, well, I, I technically agree with Julian's statement here. Priest forever in eternal sense. He is eternal forever, now and forever. King over an eternal kingdom did not end in 70 AD. He, she is right. The kingdom did not end in 70 AD because Christ did not come in 70 AD. That's right. where we we'll agree on that. But no, the kingdom has not ended and it will never end because it's 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 just going to be fully installed in the future when Christ comes back. 
Okay, so let's see. If the marriage is at the end of time, then God either has children out of wedlock today, or when the wedding takes place, there will be no children born of the marriage. Is God's seed unfruitful? Yeah, I don't, I don't get this reference. I don't know what that means, because the, the marriage that, I mean, the marriage of Israel to Christ is, it's a metaphor. It's not. And what marriage was there in AD 70? Well, yeah, metaphorically, metaphorically, if, if, uh, metaphorically, if, if the marriage was consummated in 70 AD, then yes, the marriage would be over. Metaphorically speaking, because it is, it's a meta, it's kind of a metaphor. Like it's, it's a poetic way to say that we are, we are God's chosen one. He loves us. Like that, that's how, that's what he's talking about when he talks about marriage. Like, yeah. It, yeah. So I don't know about, I don't know what this is about children born of the marriage. Cause there's, there's not going to be children born of this marriage. Like there's, that's, that's not, that's, that's taking the metaphor like way off base there. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So Pharaoh, Jesus is the high priest until all things are under dominion of this kingdom. Well, he's he's still a high priest, even if he does put everything under dominion of the uh, of the kingdom. I would say, but uh, I I technically I mean I I know what you meant, so I agree with you there. Then he hands the complete redemption of man over to the Father. There will be no sin then, and no need of a high priest. No, there is still going to be a high priest, but yeah, uh, I do appreciate you being nice, though. I appreciate you being nice too, David Gates. <laughs> I'm trying not to be a jerk, so, you know, and you've never been a jerk to me so far, so I'm not going to be a jerk back to you, so, yeah. Do you believe you are a child born of the marriage? No, I don't not believe... Not the marriage that. of AD 70. Yeah, I'm not a child born of AD 70. I am I'm a child a, born of God, but I'm not... Right, I'm we're not, a child born of the covenant made between the Father and the Son at the cross. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a child of God, yes, but uh, not yeah, we're, born. Of we're not children of eighty seven. Yeah, I'm not born of the marriage of seventy A.D. Yeah, that wouldn't that wouldn't make much sense. I don't think since it's a no. metaphor. Christ isn't having sex with us. That's that's weird. Yeah, the the metaphor is going a little too far. It doesn't yeah, work I, like that. I just don't think that that works. No. Well. Preston might even agree with me on that. I don't know. Like, he might be like, yeah, that's a little too far on the metaphors. I don't know. But, yeah. Uh, let's give this, like, let's give this a few more minutes and see if anybody else responds or anything. Um, let's see. <laughs> uh -huh. I guess that was kind of funny. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Well, I don't see anything so far. Nope. So, yeah, All right. that's what I got on the election. Like, I think that I think that pretty much refutes it. But if you've got something else you want to talk about or anything, like, we'll just try it some more. And yeah, like I said, I'm open to dialogue. Like, you can video chat me anytime, and uh, you know. I'm I'm open to it. Yep. Yeah, well, that's all the time we have for evening musings. Evening we'll... musings. <laughs> we'll see you next time. See you later.